In this video I will show you how to recruit a beginner to make you in the game easily. I will show you how to become the hero from zero just in the matter of turns. This is another risk global domination for player fixed card game which is being played on the Lost Temple map. Settings, Alliance is on, Balance Blitz dice rolls in 60 seconds per turn. So first of all what I saw from the stats is that the orange and red players are most likely low ranked inexperienced opponents, while the pink player should be higher rank experienced player. In the beginning of the game it's good to look at your opponent's stats as then by predicting their ranks you can potentially adapt your playing style to that. Low rank players will usually be more aggressive and play more based on the emotions, mostly focused on attacking the neighboring players while high-ranked opponents won't be as spontaneous with their decisions, will think twice before attacking, will take a look towards the troops counter as well, and instead of being enemies with the neighboring players, will try to be their friends, so they would be sure to not get invaded into their held areas. So judging by the orange player's spontaneous attack to immediately invade the red player into his area and then even completely wipe him out of it, I see that the orange player must be a low-ranked aggressive player, Aggressive because not only of his ruthless attacks since the beginning of the game but also that he wants me to prevent from holding area by putting some troops into it instead of fortifying them one territory back, he doesn't want to show friendliness when I could totally invade him if I just wanted to. And low ranked because obviously it was just dumb to completely take care of other strong player while letting the another strong player get a huge advantage over all of us. By the orange player not being able to properly guard his areas the pink player had no issues to invade both of them at all, at the same time making sure that she will stay the strongest one. So the orange player just ended up doing the dirty work for the pink player, as while orange took care of another area holding player called red, the pink player with me not having any areas either just only needed to take care of the orange player himself to make sure that she gets to dominate the game. And by the pink player's attack I could say that the pink player is a high rank aggressive player, instead of letting the orange player hold the easily invasional areas, she invaded them, so she would be in the advantage. Some high rank players just want to be very passive and turtle as much as possible, even if they can invade others easily, but judging by the pink player's decision to invade orange, I can predict that the pink player is a decent player who knows how to take the game into her hands once she sees an opportunity as to let the orange player hold basically not protected areas and get the advantage over her would have just been dumb when she could have so easily prevented that. So so far I see that pink is potentially a very decent player, and not only because of that but because she makes her turns relatively fast as well, like if we compare with the red player who was sometimes taking more than half of the turn just to deploy his troops. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's something bad. I'm just pointing out another detail which could help you discern a lower ranked player from a higher ranked one. So anyways, with the pink player being able to constantly invade orange and actually even being close to destroying him, I need to potentially deter the pink player from invading him, or at least make it harder, so what I did is fortified some troops next to the pink player's closest army, so she would know that I won't just be a passive player to do nothing while she would be easily taking over the game. No, even though being weak I will try my best to resist. As after all I know that it will be mostly up to me and orange when it comes to saving the game, I don't expect much from the red player at all, I think he would consider attacking pink only if he gets invaded in his area by pink, but before he even gets the area for himself, the pink player could become too overpowered for it to make a difference. But I think it was smart to send him the alliance request anyways, so with pink player being overpowered, he wouldn't decide to invade me with me being his weaker neighboring player once he captures that area for himself. But that doesn't really matter anymore as it seems he's just quit and the bot taken over him, and I think maybe it will actually be even better, as that just guarantees that he won't be going after me, at least when it comes to specially, as the bot will just be algorithmic but not acting based on the emotions or feelings. Anyways. I think it was a big mistake for the pink player to not invade the orange player and instead of that just switch to playing passively. As we clearly see what happened as the result. With the orange player invading her, she stopped being the dominating player as after me trading in a set I will become as strong as her, and the orange player should catch up to us soon as well. 
and to be honest she not only could have invaded the orange player easily but she also had the opportunity to completely take him out as well, as long as not getting two bad blitz rolls, as let's remember she received even 19 troops that turn which she could have combined with some of the already available troops. So I think it was a blunder for her, I really think she missed a potential opportunity to win. Anyways, what I am trying to do right now is to potentially honey trap the orange player. The player who immediately starts crushing another player right away from the beginning of the game while not even realizing that it gives a huge advantage to another area holding player, is a perfect candidate for that if we remember that moment with the red player in the beginning of the game. So what I'm doing right now is trying to make the orange player believe that I'm his best friend, I congratulate him after he invades pink by saying well played and also sending a lot of thumbs up emojis in general and besides that even attacking the pink player by myself also. And furthermore I'm not even guarding against him at all. So all of that should really make him take our alliance way too seriously and because of that he could potentially give away me the game without him even realizing that. As after all I don't really think he knows much about the balance of the game or how important it is to constantly look at the troops counter, I think that he mostly cares about is to capture and hold some areas for himself while invading the areas of his enemies as well. And believe it or not but I think the pink player made herself as a huge enemy of the orange player by constantly invading the orange player back then, so I don't think the orange player will let her go so easily at all. So it was just so unfortunate for me that the red computer player suddenly traded in a 10 troop set at 3 cards, as with it invading my area and leaving a lot of troops next to me in general, it put me into a huge disadvantage comparing to orange. And to be honest with me recapturing the area and crushing these bots troops, the orange player could have really betrayed me and taken the game into his hands with me ending up being so weak. But thank god he stayed as a loyal ally and used all of his troops towards attacking the pink player, so I guess the honey trap strategy is perfectly working out for me, as it seems I really made him take our alliance way too seriously with him not leaving any bigger army close to me as well but moving the majority of his troops next to the pink player. And while he missed the opportunity to betray me, I think I won't going to miss mine. I really think I could take over the advantage right now. So it's just too bad I've got these unfortunate blitz rolls crushing these armies made of threes, as if the orange player had a set right now, then he could do a lot of serious damage to me. To be honest the orange player could potentially invade me even without having a set, but that could make him barely alive as well. But on the other hand yeah, that could potentially equalize mine, oranges and pinks chances to win once again, so I wouldn't potentially end up being too overpowered. Well. Another thing I was considering to do is taking out the pink player for 3 cards as long as not being unfortunate enough when it comes to blitz rolls and only then after trading in a set, invading orange into both of his areas. The pink player only had the territories made of 1s, but since both of them were at 3 cards, I decided to rather go instantly invading the orange player and leaving the pink player for the next turn, as it was unlikely for both of them to have sets and with the orange player not having a set, it could have been unlikely for him to take the pink player out. The pink player unexpectedly traded in a set though, but after all it didn't really matter because of just simply being neutral or even invading me so I wouldn't become too strong. The pink player made the dirty work for me by invading the orange player, so I could just use all of my troops to guarding. I ended up having more troops than both of them combined, but since it wasn't worth to take the pink player out and since it would have been unlikely to take the orange player out, I just simply captured one territory. After all I'm so happy with my situation right now, as at the beginning of the game I was the only player who couldn't capture any area and was supposed to be barely alive. But with the orange player being constantly attacked by pink, I decided that it would be a great idea to send the alliance request for orange and try honey trap him. So after all I could say that I was able to recruit him just to make him destroy the pink player giving me away the game. So anyways with the orange player quitting the game I decided to send the alliance request for the pink player just to show her that my intentions are friendly and that I would be willing to destroy red and orange before taking her out. As obviously with me dominating the game, the pink player being barely alive and the two other players being bots which are not dangerous at all, 
the situation is totally in my hands to decide which players to eliminate first. And if possible I like to give the second place for the real player over the computer players as long as I see it's safe to do so. But as you can see the pink player still invaded me. So I guess the pink player thought that I just wanted to make the fun of it. And I mean that's understandable as it would be very unlikely for someone to do it. So by not being sure if the pink player understands that I want to give her the second place, I decided to give her another chance, so now it's all up to her to decide once again whether she wants to finally be my friend or still attack me. And as you can see the pink player has decided to still be my enemy, so that makes sense for me to stop being generous and take her out first. But this game is unranked anyways, and actually maybe this is why the pink player didn't really care about that. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, then I would recommend checking some of these out as well.